So um, I'm here now with Tom Chisholm, and um, he's very interested in these subjects and is helping me to get them introduced in a wider audience. Um, what we're finding is that our civilization is in for some big changes as quantum physics and its implications become clearer to more and more people. And so I'm very happy to be part of that, but I also know that this will probably not be entirely to the liking of some people. So I think that the average person has had some intuition that he's in a quantum universe all along because after all, when we see things, we see them in their entirety, not bit by bit, pixel by pixel. So a digital universe, which is the current rage, is constructed of, you know, infinitely, or I shouldn't say infinitely, finitely many tiny little tidbits, uh, which the eye and the mind know how to put together. But while all of that is affecting us, we tend, as sentient beings, to see things in their entirety, so that when I look at you, I look at you in your entirety. I don't see you as bit by bit or as shoes, socks, trousers, shirt, and glasses. Rather, I see you as an entirety and have an opinion about that. Well, that is kind of the nature of a quantum universe. A quantum universe starts out being fundamentally about its entirety, and everything else within the universe is some fraction or some part of that entirety. So we've really been thinking in a quantum way for a very long time. It's nothing to be afraid of. And it's actually perfectly natural to our entire logic system and being. We're, we have long been quantum creatures. Religion tends to try to reduce everything to simple religious procedures and ceremonies. Um, with the promise that if these are faithfully carried out, um, your wishes will be heard and probably addressed, and with the thought that um, your ultimate fate in heaven or not is to be guided in this lifetime, and religion can help you to guide that. In some senses, my quantum view of the universe is a religion in which I think that the nature and the purpose of the universe are now revealed. I believe that the universe was built with the intent that life should emerge. And that this life, having free will, should come by its own means and development and evolution, should come to appreciate and thereby glorify the Creator. It's my impression that the universe was built by a cosmic intelligence that built into this universe a number of guiding principles, and that these principles, uh, and I'm talking about the theory of evolution and the, the quantum principles we're talking about now, and the existence of life, lifetime having a finite duration, and there being lives and future lives and afterlives and all of that. So all of that is what my mean, I mean by the basic principles built into this universe. And with a universe built this way, we really don't have anything to fear. The uh, Creator is not interested in making judgments about our lives. The, the, the Creator is mostly concerned with seeing how these sentient free will creatures will progress to their ultimate goal, which was expressed into the universe or built into the universe long ago. And the more that we conform to those universal principles, the easier we will find our lives, and the more we resist them, the more difficult our lives. And I think that that is what I would consider it to be the ultimate religion. And if I might talk a little bit about what those purposes are, they are specifically the universe was built for life to emerge 
and to ultimately glorify the Creator by coming to understand what the universe is and that in some way the scientists who have devoted their lives to approach such an understanding are actually the heroes of our civilization. And of course, don't you notice that I'm a scientist and so that makes me one of the heroes. Nonetheless, that being said, I believe that those are the principles that guide the universe and therefore I don't think that we are born into original sin or anything of that kind. I think we are born into eternal life and that the more we embrace that, the more successful our lives become. And so you're integrating reason with divine law and religion, which would seem sensible. It seems like this is where common sense meets, meets the divine as opposed to superstition, fear, and loathing mm -hmm. meeting, meeting the divine, which seems like the true contradiction. Yeah. And um, to take that a step further, I think that my approach to religion makes a very attractive version of religion, um, or let's say of personal thought, um, that's attractive to very rational people like scientists and engineers who like everything to be well thought through and who like things to require no faith, require no belief system, but rather just be grounded in what is and what I can see and measure for myself. And so I expect that community to embrace these ideas. In many ways, I think I speak to the congregation and not to the ministry. I don't think that I speak well to the theologians because um, I have talked to a few and I find that none of them are interested in learning a mastery of quantum physics. Um, I think that they have a lot to lose if the conversation becomes one about learning obscure principles of the universe and if, in fact, then a 2,000-year uh, tradition in theology gets sidestepped by an increasing interest in precepts of science, it's my view that we've examined sacred writing for 2,000 years now, and I'm not hearing anybody say anything that's particularly new or interesting in the body of theology. I mean, I can't name a prominent theologian today that... I've read about in the newspapers or seen on TV. Um, and so it seems that I'm likely to be popular with the congregations and unpopular with the religious authorities. And I don't know what to do about that because everything that I say is simply sincere and it's not guided by what you might call religious principles or devotion to a cause. It's just the truth. It's just from observing how things work and saying mm -hmm. this is this is really how we observe things are really working. And I'm glad you said it that way because that's the way I like to think about it. I'm not. Uh, it will be interesting to see how many other individuals see it that way. I do know that when I've shared these thoughts with the Native American community, they've agreed with them and helped me to extend them. And also, I know that when I address elements of the New <coughs> Age community, like the UFO conference people, um, and people involved in near-death experiences, they also feel a close relationship to this body of material because it seems to me that what they've plugged into or tuned into by their intense experiences with the universe Many of them have come to similar conclusions to mine and are happy to see it embellished and um, uh, improved by other deep thinking and even perhaps a mathematical theory, which I now can offer. It seems like a contradiction, but it also it, it occurs to me that at least the Western, Western church ideology is much more secular in the following, it is man over nature, man separated from nature. The institutions or the concerns that you're describing are traditions that are much more, have been much more in touch with nature. 
yeah. and they so therefore would seem more likely to be receptive of this kind of thinking than institutions that put themselves above nature and see themselves as omnipotent to everything around them. Oh boy, isn't that the truth? Um, and you do see us in many of the philosophical aspects of our civilization trying to ask questions like, as we increasingly enforce our intent upon the ecology of our Earth, what are we doing to our future? And what are the prospects for our Earth? And so there it is already in the air that we are doing something to our Earth. Whereas I believe the principles that I'm espousing uh, are rather like the Native American principles of learning to live in balance with the Earth, learning to live in balance with our ecology, to work with our ecology, to provide abundance for all, which I think um, underscores the conflict that we're seeing between the 99% and the 1%. The 1% are being typically the ones that are involving themselves with mastering our environment to the maximization of our human existence, whatever that means. That means different things to different people, obviously. But I think the 99% are more aligned with my idea of just learning to get along, as Rodney King said. So less concern for necessarily religious icons or personal icons, material icons, and more of a concern, more of an understanding of how we're, everything is interconnected. And our joint well-being, the, jo the well-being of our civilization as a whole with a future so that uh, we're not um, spending out our and depleting our resources now uh, with no thought of the future. Yes, techn technology will probably solve some future problem, but always it seems technology and technological development come with a rough edge namely the absorption of chemical and energy resources and things of that kind. And quite possibly, too, if there, is a, if there is a generally accepted understanding of phenomena such as reincarnation, one could assume that we will start to remember some of our reincarnational past and realize that our own historical past, uh, we're much more related than we might think that we are. Yeah. Um, if we're enamored in this life, our prowess in this life, it disconnects us from our legacy through the century. And if you can imagine, we can imagine if we understand the true interrelationship on a mass level that we've all had as merging and diverging consciousnesses, it's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah. I'm glad you bring up the topic of reincarnation because as near as I can tell, reincarnation is a good idea. Or reincarnation is fundamental to the operation of the universe. Um, just as you've heard me mention already that it seems like the universe was created and is being guided by a cosmic intelligence, it seemed for me easiest, even though I don't have a Buddhist upbringing, easiest to think of reincarnation as making sense because uh, at the same time it in this, at the same time that it encourages us to think of ourselves as having past lives, which culminate in our present life, which, if it's successful, will add to the prospects for a future life. So just as that seems true and a logical development to me, it seems also that increasingly it's coming out to be compatible with the precepts of the Christian religion into which I was born. And so, for example, I'm starting to notice that we've always had a sense in the Christian faith that um, we go after death to a heaven or a hell depending on how well our lives are judged on that judgment day after death. But what we're hearing from the community of people who've experienced this near-death experience, who describe how after watching the hospital operation on their physical body from a place high above the room, they're aware of passing through a tunnel and having a life review in which all the major developments of their lives, their friends, their associates, their principal decisions that they've made, get passed before their consciousness 
And then, in encountering a creator, they mention a decision is made that they must return. But when they've done so, they report that they've come to a new understanding of what their life is. They come to understand how their life is played out according to the intent before we came to life. And in reviewing our life's events, we actually judge ourselves. We come to understand what our life was meant to be about, how it played out, and we come to a point of judging our life by ourselves. This means then that our eternal being goes back to wherever it goes with some knowledge of where it is in its state of development and what it needs to do next for an even higher state of development. And so I see this as completely compatible with religious teaching of judgment at the end of life, and then you're going to a better space or not. The better space being we come to understand we've made progress in our life and we're now facing an even brighter future of an even greater lifetime before us. I think that all of this sort of suggests to me that the biblical version is not bad. It's pretty good. But, and but maybe where the politics got in the way would be that the either-or fallacy. Either I'm a good person or I'm a bad person. Yeah. Either I'm going there or I'm going there. There's so much psychological splitting that goes along with religion and as part of our culture as an extension of that part and parcel of it. But what you're describing seems to be looking at our lives as much more of a continuum in a quantum way. Beautiful. Altogether. It could have been a teeny bit better there, and it could have been a teeny bit worse there. Right. But nonetheless, it is what my life is, has been now. And looking at that and looking forward, what's next?